Hey, what is up, guys? It is Limited Llama back with another SoWare MLB video. Today, I'm going to be giving some advanced tips about how to maximize your lineup in MLB SoWare, and I'm also going to be giving a quick update on how my teams are doing for game week eight. So, I'll start off with a quick update. Currently, my teams are actually doing pretty decently. Uh, Comment All Star, I got some points from both Luke Voigt and um, Alexis Diaz. I think he, yeah, he started today. Or no, he didn't start. He's a relief pitcher. So he pitched a couple innings, got the win, got me 18 points. Um, so I think I'll probably get a, about an average common all-star player uh, from this competition. This limited all-star competition, I honestly didn't think I was going to place in the top 600. But it's actually, it's, it's looking pretty likely now. Munoz has gotten me a lot of points the past couple days. Uh, the Guardians have one more day, so Ramirez and Rosario have one game left. Peterson has two, Abreu has two, and then Zach Gallon is going to pitch, I think, tomorrow on Thursday. So I should still be getting a lot of points here. Obviously, Gray isn't going to pitch again. Munoz isn't going to pitch again. So uh, these are essentially the five players left that can get me some points. But uh, based on my, my benchmark of around 160 points needed to place in this competition, I think that's pretty doable. That puts me about needing 50-ish more points over the next two days, um, which I think is, is definitely doable. Gallon seems to consistently get me 20 to 30 points, so then I would only need about 30 points from my position players, which seems doable. Over on the limited pro side of the thing, uh, side of competitions, I don't think I'm going to be end up end up placing. Even though Cueto did get me 30 points, Adam has gotten me a lot of points uh, from, I think it was a save. Yeah, 10 points from a save. Uh, Contreras has done well. But Colton Wong, uh, Slater, Velasquez, and Mike Miner just aren't really getting me enough points. And again, in limited pro, you have to be in the top uh, 250 to actually place. So you have to be uh, in the top quite a few to place in limited pro, so I just don't think that's going to happen with the team that I have set up. But as a reminder, I always try to compete with my best players in the limited all-star competition to continue to grow uh, my player set and the players that I have. So now that I've given a, an overview of that, I'm going to go through um, kind of some advanced tips that I've found out as I've played so rare. So I kind of have three main run main ones. The first one is going to be using stacks. So if you've played any daily fantasy uh, baseball before, you've probably heard of the idea of a stack. And a stack is basically having players that bat back to back. So for example, if you want, uh, you, you might want to have the player who bats second and third and maybe even fourth for a specific team. And the reason that you do that is that they multiply their value if they do well. So going back to my Guardians, Ahmed Rosario bats second, Jose Ramirez bats, four, bats third. So if Ahmed Rosario gets on base with a double and Jose Ramirez hits a single, now I have a run, an RBI, a double, and a single, all for simply two hits because um, I get the points for both the RBI and the run that Ahmed Rosario drove it that Ahmed Rosario scored, and then I would get the point for the RBI from Jose Ramirez. So as you kind of uh, get players that hit back to back to back, if they, if they do well, your lineup can do really, really well. However, it's also true that this kind of adds a little bit more risk because, for example, if Ahmed Rosario and Jose Ramirez have a bad week, then I'm probably not going to place. But again, it's important to note, going back over to So Rare, the only way that you're going to be placing on these competitions is if you're in the top 20%, in the top 10%. So the way you, you want to do that is by essentially going all out, right? And the way to do that is by playing stacks. So if you play a stack and you have a 50% chance to do really well and a 50% chance to do poorly, that's better than having a 100% chance to do average because placing average is not going to get you any prizes. You need to do exceptionally well to get prizes. And so taking that risk is worth it. So you really want to play stacks. That's why having Jose Ramirez and Ahmed Rosario back to back has been doing pretty well for me, even though they aren't doing well this week. Now, the second uh, tip that I wanna talk about is that you really need to think carefully about how you're using the flex spot in a lineup. In order to show this, I'm going to go over to the upcoming and bring up the limited all-star competition for this next week. So as a reminder, the flexed competition can be any player. So that can be both a pitcher or a hitter. 
And it's really important that you think about the expected uh, points that the player is going to get you as you as you decide to put somebody here. In the past, I've primarily put starting pitchers in this spot, but I actually don't think that's always the best case. What you want to keep an eye out on is whether or not you have a short week or a long week. So if the, the short week start on Friday and the run through Sunday, so generally that's going to be three games that a team is playing. The long weeks start, start on Monday and they go through Thursday. And normally that'll be four games, although sometimes it can be three. So if you have a long week, you might want to think about putting a position player in your flex spot if you have a good enough position player. So for example, if I had Jose Abreu who was playing four games, say it's a long week, my expected value for Jose Abreu is seven times four, which is seven, 14, 21, 28 points for Jose Abreu on a long week if he were playing four games. But if I, over, if I go to my starting pitchers, they're only averaging 22 points, 22 points, 21 points, 20 points. So you can see on average, Jose Abreu is actually going to do better than these starting pitchers would do. But if you look on a short week where you only have three games, Jose Abreu is only going to be putting up 21 points, which is right on par with Zach Allen, Johnny Cueto, Josiah Gray, right? These good pitchers. So at, at that point, it might make more sense to start your starting pitcher in this spot. So you really want to think carefully about this spot. It also occasionally could make sense to start a relief pitcher in this spot. For example, um, specifically if it's a long week and your team is playing all four days and your pitcher hasn't pitched Sunday. So if they have a chance to pitch Monday, Tuesday, have the off day Wednesday and then pitch Thursday, they could have three days of potentially holds or saves, and that could rack you up 30 or 35 points. Again, though, as a reminder, your average points for a relief pitcher is going to be around 7 to 10, and they're only ever going to pitch three days as a max because they never will pitch more than two days in a row. So, for example, Andres Munoz pitched Monday, pitched Tuesday. He's not going to pitch today. He could pitch tomorrow, though. Um, except the Mariners don't play. So if you have a, a unique case where your relief pitcher could potentially pitch three days, then it might be worthwhile to have them play in this flex spot. In general, though, I think the rule of thumb that I'm going to be going with going forward is if it's a short week, Friday through Sunday, I'll be putting a starting pitcher in the spot. And if it's a long week, I'll probably be putting one of my position players in the spot because they'll end up, on average, racking up more points. So yeah, short week versus long week, that's really what you wanna be thinking about in that flex spot. And then the final thing is just a, a formula to keep in mind, and this is a pretty pretty normal one, pretty uh, basic formula, but basically it's the player's average per game times their expected games played is going to be their total expected score. So hopping back over to so rare, right, Jason Adam, he's on average getting seven points per game but he's pitching three, or he has three games. So seven, 12, or seven, 14, 21 is 21 points on average. But you, what you especially want to be careful of is that a lot of these players aren't going to actually be playing in three games. So Jason Adam, for example, he's a relief pitcher. He's not going to be pitching all three games, right? He's only going to be pitching two of those, maybe one. So he's actually only going to be getting these seven or 14 points, not all 21. You especially have to be careful of this with relief pitchers and with catchers. So William Contreras, catchers normally don't play every single day. On average, if they're a starting catcher, maybe you'll start two out of three games, maybe even three out of four, but you're going to have an off day here and then just because catching is such a, a tiring position. So William Contreras here, he's probably going to end up only playing two out of these three days. Potentially, he could be DHing the other day, which would mean I would still be getting hitting points for those. But that's why you really want to be careful about picking up catchers as center infielders, because they just aren't really good center infielders, because they aren't going to be picking up points every single day. Another thing that you really want to be careful about is platoon players. So some teams 
have platoons where, where they'll have a set of players that play against a righty and they'll have a set of players that play against a lefty and they won't play the, the players that play against the righty against a lefty pitcher. So if you pick up a player who's in a platoon and they only play against righty pitchers, then they aren't going to be playing in every game and you aren't going to be getting points for them in every game. So you want to be careful about picking up players who are in platoons um, and making sure that you're, you're getting players who are going to be playing every single day. And that'll allow you to, to easily calculate how many points they're going to get. You just multiply the season average score, which is obviously shown for you, and then multiply that times the amount of games that they're going to be playing. Another thing that you might want to be uh, keeping track of as you're playing this game more and more is the little percentages. So as you like level up your players by playing them more and more, they actually get a bonus on the points scored. So if down the line you have a player who has who's like level 10 and they have plus 10%, you might want to consider playing them over a player that just has plus 5% because you're going to be getting 5% more points from the player that has plus 10% over plus 5%. So um, that's kind of all I had. The important thing to remember about So Rare is that baseball is really a game of averages. Like as you're looking at which players to play, you need to be thinking, what am I going to get on average? And if they do better than that, that's awesome. But there's also going to be weeks that they do worse than that. But obviously you aren't going to want to play somebody who on average isn't that good. Uh, I hope these, hips, these tips were helpful. And um, I'm actually... I have a, a series idea coming down the pipeline that is going to be really helpful coming, uh, thinking about which sower players are really good to get and how to, to create your lineup to maximize the points you're getting. So if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And you might even want to hit the bell to get a notification because I'll be starting that series this weekend and it should have some really helpful tips about creating good sower rosters and getting the players who have the best points per buck. So that's all I have. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.